Hi, in this video I will share with you everything you need to know to pull the lights and paint the shadows in watercolor. Whether you're just starting out or you're already a pro, this video is for you. We'll take you from understanding the basics all the way to expert level shading techniques that will make your paintings pop. I've also included two full demos, one in monochrome and one in color, to help you better understand the lighting and shading in a practical way. As a bonus, I will demonstrate yet another alternative technique to shading at the end of the video. Join me as we explore different approaches and tools that will elevate your artwork to the next level. Art is a free form of expression and the information shared with you in this video is a suggestion to guide and inspire your artistic journey. As an artist, feel free to experiment, adapt and deviate from any guidelines to create a unique and personal expression of your creativity. Embrace your artistic freedom and enjoy the process of discovering your own voice. Let's get started. Choosing the right brush for shading in watercolor is very important. It enables you to have better control over your painting and achieve the desired results. The bristles, size and hair length affect how much water or paint it can hold and release. For shading, I suggest using a synthetic brush of medium size that would not absorb too much water. This will make it easier to control the amount of pigment it holds. I recommend setting up your paper at an angle of approximately 45 degrees. This angle allows the water and pigment to flow downwards, helping you create smooth and controlled washes. This angle also prevents pooling of water and pigment which can lead to unwanted puddles and uneven drying. It also helps you have better control when applying the paint. It allows you to manipulate the flow of water and pigment so you can blend the shading. I start by wetting my brush with clean water to paint the lightest value. The brush should be as wet as possible but without letting the water run down the paper. For the next value, I load my brush with a little bit more pigment and add it to the clean water mix. Notice that I painted the next value overlapping the previous, creating a smooth transition. I continue adding more pigment to the mix, checking its consistency, as it should be thicker than the last. When adding more pigment, I am careful to mix it very well as otherwise it will create an uneven layer on the paper. As I paint, I constantly assess if the value is too light or too dark. If so, we'll go back to the palette, adjust the mix and apply it over making the correction. I will proceed to do the same for the next values. Mastering the values in watercolor requires commitment, patience and a lot of practice. Eventually, knowing the amount of water and pigment on the brush and the result when applied on the paper will become second nature. As a tip, I recommend using the best materials you can afford. Economy watercolors use more binders and less pigment and tend to go down muddy and opaque. Also don't really allow for some of the layering and translucency effects that watercolor is known for. Same for the paper, but this is a topic for another video. As we reach the darkest values, the mix will be getting thicker and thicker to the point that the darkest value is basically the paint from the tube. Mm -hmm. 
We will start with techniques in monochrome to prove that it will be impossible to shade in watercolor without increasing or decreasing the water pigment ratio. Basically, knowing how thin or thick your mix is when applied to the paper. I recommend practicing and dominating this technique before moving on to shading with colors. For the practical demonstration, we are going to assume that the light is coming from the top left. In watercolor, the lightest value is the white of your paper, so I am going to paint with the lightest value leaving the highlights untouched. I load more pigment to the mix, being aware of how much is on my brush before applying it. I overlap the first layer to create the transition. For the next values, I apply the same principle until reaching the darkest darks. I mix a minimum amount of water to the paint, just enough so it will flow on the paper. I'm applying a medium light value for the background to make the highlights pop. I'm going to share with you two additional techniques that you can apply in your watercolor paintings. To make it more interesting, in the first example let's assume that the light is pointing from the top and in the second the light is pointing from the top right. For the background, I use a hake brush to cover the drawing with a light wash. Then, I use a dry or damp paper cloth to pull out the highlights. You can also wet a dry brush with clean water and then dry it thoroughly to achieve the same effect. I like this technique because you can control the highlights better and leave brush strokes on the paper. I 
I continue to work the shadows on the shape using a thicker and thicker water pigment mix. I noticed that the paper cloth left some hard edges next to the highlight. You can correct this using a damp brush. I finish up by painting the darkest darks with the thickest consistency. You can also pull out the highlights using a spatula or similar object. Keep in mind that this works best only on the darkest darks. In the second example, I will paint from dark to light. Yes, you can do this in watercolor, but this technique is rarely used because it requires a great amount of control and will not be practical for painting landscapes. I start painting the darkest tones with the thickest consistency. Then, adding more water to the mix, continue working my way up to the lightest tones until I reach the highlights. At the final stages, I assess the values. In this case, I have to go back and correct some of the values refining the shape. I thought it would be useful to share with you a quick seascape sketch, applying everything that we've covered so far. Also, to demonstrate that working from light to dark and varying the consistency of the water and pigment is crucial to achieving depth in watercolor. I start with a light wash to paint the sky and the distant clouds. As I prepare to go down to the horizon line and middle ground, I add more pigment to the mix.
I apply the same principle by thickening the mix as I move on to the foreground. Now that the background is fairly dry, I refine and add more details to the middle ground with more pigment. Then I work the foreground with the darkest values, leaving the darkest darks for the rocks. I continue to darken the rocks to bring them even closer to the foreground. And then I use a spatula to pull out some of the lost highlights. To finish up, let's paint a few birds in the distance and suggest some boats farther behind. For this part of the video, I will use a primary color palette of yellow, red and blue. I purposely added two of each hue, a warm and a cool, 
to demonstrate later on that at the end all of them should be seen as three hues. We will apply the same principles as with monochrome for shading with colors, starting very light and then adding more pigment. As the color darkens, we will add a complementary color to the mix. By using complementaries for shading, you can maintain the overall color harmony of your artwork, while adding depth and dimension to your shadows. The colors maintain their brilliance, avoiding becoming dull or shifting hue. I mix the secondary colors, purple, green, and orange, using the primaries on my palette. Using a limited palette and a range of primaries will greatly help you control the color and achieve harmony in your painting. When shading yellow, I start by adding red and blue as needed and adjust the mix until achieving a darker value. For red, I do the same by adding blue and yellow. And for the blue, I darken it with a mix of red and yellow. For the color demonstration, I picked a fruit still life to showcase as many primaries, secondaries and complementaries as possible. I use a 2B pencil for the drawing. We are going to assume that the light is hitting the fruit ball from the top left. I mix a very light warm gray using my primaries. Then, using a hake brush, I apply the wash just to kill the white of the paper, leaving the highlights white. I use this technique as a roadmap for the colors, similar to an underpainting. It will also give more body and harmonic unity to the painting. Now, it's time to start painting, putting in practice all the techniques covered so far. I will paint in a speedy manner, so the colors on the paper remain fairly wet, blending together and avoiding hard edges. I also clean my palette every now and then, before I start with a new color, to avoid mudding the mix. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this video. It means a lot. Also, stick around for the bonus content after the demo. Your comments are very important to me and for sure we'll take them into account for future videos. So please leave one below. Now it's time to sit back, relax and enjoy the demonstration.
For the final touches, I applied white wash to pull some of the highlights that were lost along the way. This technique is commonly used, but needs to be done very sparingly, just reserved for very few highlights, as too much wash will ruin the quality of your painting. For bonus content, I am going to include an alternative way of shading by using neutral tint. I personally don't use this technique, but feel free to experiment with it and be the judge. Neutral tint is a pigment that, according to the Daniel Smith website, when mixed with any other color, neutral tint produces glowing darker values of that color. It is not my intention to undermine this color. It is amazing and very useful for different applications. Also, I absolutely love Daniel Smith and is one of my top three brands. However, when mixing the yellow to a darker shade, it shifted the hue to green, a similar effect to darkening colors with black. In case of red, blue, and orange, it may work. I did not experiment with the other complementaries, as this is possibly a topic for another video. Again, shading with complementaries is in my opinion unsurpassed in achieving luminosity and overall harmony in your paintings. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more art-related content. Thank you so much for watching this video. Your support and passion for authentic artistic expression are truly invaluable. And I am very grateful for your role in keeping the spirit of art alive.